Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to another Blood Splattered vlog on this incredibly rainy and not at all sunny California day. Seriously, we just went through like three years of just pure drought and now it's like Floodmageddon. It's kind of scary out there. Anyway, I'm pretty sure you didn't tune in to hear me talk about my state's weather patterns. You tuned in to hear me talk about a fucked up Japanese horror film. That's right, this week I'm talking about a 2014 Takashi Miike film entitled As the Gods Will. And holy shit, this movie is super fucked. For those of you who've not seen a trailer for this movie, this movie is essentially battle royale for the video game generation. It's a bunch of high school students who've been stuck inside this giant god cube in which the gods essentially force them to play out these death games, where if they succeed, they get to live, but if they don't, they are just fucking murdered. And some of the games include, like, this very Japanese version of Red Light, Green Light, where if the thing turns around, their heads just explode into these bloody marbles. If they're still moving, of course. If they remain still when it turns around, then they get to continue on. With the ultimate goal being this button on the back of the thing's head. And honestly, Honestly, off the top of my head, I'm completely forgetting what the thing's called. I think it's like a drama or something. I'll put it right here so that you can read it and ignore my idiocy. Anyway, the point is, these kids are forced to play this really awful game, and they die in truly horrific and fucked up ways. But even so, it's not necessarily as brutal as something like Itchy the Killer, which is super, like, raw and visceral. This movie is way more like a live-action anime, so it's super exaggerated and cartoony, and it actually fits because it's actually an adaptation of a similarly named manga. But it's only an adaptation of the manga's first arc, and I'll get to that more when we get to the spoilers, because that's important. But yeah, before we get to the big spoilers, I really liked this movie. I had a couple problems with it, but overall, this movie is totally worth it if you're into Japanese extreme cinema. It's also worth it if you're an anime fan and like this kind of cartoony, exaggerated kind of movie. It's high in some really good melodrama, it does a really good job of making you care about specific students before they die. Kind of like how in Battle Royale, you learn a whole lot about these students and their relationships before they're about to die. This movie does a similar thing. It goes into, like, the backgrounds of some of these characters and their relationships to one another, usually, like, right before one one of them's about to bite it. Which admittedly is a bit of a pattern in the movie, but it's so seamless you don't even notice it's a pattern until the end of the movie. I guess what I'm saying is, you're so engrossed you don't care if it's a little formulaic at times. But even then, I gotta admit, there are plenty times in this movie where things happen that I was not expecting in the slightest. Especially in like the last 30 minutes. And yeah, I really fucking love the main characters, I love their relationship with one another, I love the villain of the story, which actually isn't the god itself, which you'd think it would be. I I even love the really cartoony animation they use for a lot of the monsters in this movie. That could easily have looked really bad, but for whatever reason, given the anime style of the movie, it just kind of fit. Which is weird coming from me, because usually I'm complaining about CG in these horror movies, but in this movie, no, it actually kind of worked. And it also helps that every CG creature in this movie is given a ton of personality to the point where it almost doesn't matter that it's not the greatest CGI, because you still totally buy the monster as a character even if you don't buy that it's 100% there. I don't know what to say, it actually worked for me. The deaths in this movie are, like I said earlier, really fucked up, so if you like to watch people die in really gruesome ways, if you like movies like Battle Royale, you're gonna love this. In fact, the other movie this really reminded me of is Takashi Miike's adaptation of Phoenix Wright. This movie actually has a very similar, like, anime style to it. If you've seen that movie, then you kinda got an idea of what the style of this movie is, though I will say Ace Attorney went a little farther than this one did with all the titles and shit. Though even then, there are times where a character is introduced and there's like this little title sequence that happens introducing who they are. Like, there's one character who's introduced who's really good at basketball, and there's, like, this little title that basically just says, like, oh, basketball player. At least I'm assuming that's what it says. My subtitles on my copy of the film didn't entirely translate everything. Which actually leads me into a warning about this movie. This movie doesn't have an official North American release yet, so if you want to see this movie, you're going to have to import a copy yourself. Anyway, my fellow Gorehounds, if you're a Takashi Miike film, if you're a fan of Japanese extreme cinema, if you like anime-esque movies, then I highly recommend As the Gods Will, with at least one caveat being that it is the adaptation of one arc of a manga, so it kind of has a cliffhanger ending. So while the main plot with the kids is kind of resolved, the overall meta plot of this world is not. So just know that going in so you're not extremely disappointed when you get to the end. And with that all said, my fellow Gorehounds, let us move on to the spoilers. 
All right, so this game actually opens up with that fucked up version of the red light, green light game I was talking about earlier. And we're introduced to two main characters, one being this one kid who's kind of bored with his own life and constantly asking God what the point of everything is. And the other being this really smart nerdy kid who's known for stealing games from like this one game store. And at one point he actually helps the main character steal games without the cameras catching them. So you see them bond and make this ultimate friendship, but then it shows them stuck in the middle of this classroom playing this game while all their classmates are just dying left and right, but the nerdy kid figures out the way the game is played and how to stop it with the button at the back of the thing's head. So he uses this strategy of getting the main kid to jump off his back over all the marbles so he doesn't trip to press the button. And the main character succeeds and presses the button and survives the game, but what he doesn't realize is that this is only one level of a multi-level game, and only one student is allowed to survive this level in any given classroom. So unfortunately, he ends up accidentally killing his nerdy friend, whose head explodes and ends up giving a finger to the camera in this really funny scene, and you're just introduced to the first character you're grown to care about who just fucking died. And that's one thing I want to say about this movie. This movie pulls no fucking punches. Anyone you care about, they are not gonna live. So just put that to bed right away. And then the main character meets up with his main love interest, obviously the girl next door that he's been friends with his whole life and is kind of in like this friend zone thing with her, but not really because of her, more because of him. And they try to escape through the gymnasium, but they end up stuck in another game, this weird cat and mouse game with this giant like Japanese cat toy. I believe they're called like Neko statues or something like that. I'll put once again the name here so that you can all laugh at my ignorance. And so anyway, they're supposed to put on these like mouse suits, which allows them to hear what the cat is saying, but then the cat tries to eat them because they're mice. And the cat's got like this basketball hoop around its neck where like the collar would be. And there's this giant collar bell rolling around the gymnasium that if they grab and they throw through the hoop around the cat's neck, then they win the game. So they play this game, a whole lot of kids get sliced and diced and eaten alive, as well as smashed. Holy shit, a whole lot of smashing in this movie. Just pure bone crunching excitement. And the main character eventually figures out that he can distract the cat by putting a basketball cover over the bell and having his love interest throw an actual basketball at the hoop and confusing him on which one's the actual bell and which one's the basketball. And this actually succeeds until the bell hits the rim and flies off, but then the school bully shows up, grabs the bell and puts it through the hoop and they win. And we're actually introduced to this bully earlier in the movie. He's seen beating up a whole bunch of kids when the main character first arrives at the school with his nerdy friend. And immediately it's very obvious that this school bully is essentially the anime rival. He's simultaneously the antithesis of the main character while also being very similar to him. He's the antithesis in that the main character is actually very kind, caring, and generous, whereas he is just a murderous sociopath. But they're similar in that they both wanted a life of pure excitement and were kind of bored with the real world. And as a result of it, both of them really come alive in this game of life and death. Which creates this very interesting dichotomy. You essentially have the angel and the demon fighting for the prize of the gods. And while both the angel and the demon are both children of the gods, they both have different priorities. Even though to a certain extent they're like brothers from another mother. Except they have the same mother. God. Yeah, needless to say, amongst all the crazy anime-esque shenanigans this movie gets into, there is a whole lot of, like, highfalutin philosophical stuff. Which, admittedly, is something I've always really loved about manga, anime, and Japanese movies. But even if you don't like that kind of stuff, I'm pretty sure you'll still be entertained by just how batshit crazy this movie is. So after this, they're essentially the winners of their school, and they're moved on to the next trial in which they're competing against students from other schools. And for the next trial, they essentially play this really weird game that's like a really weird version of Ring Around the Rosie. I'll put the actual name of what the actual game is here. But basically the rules are you wear a blindfold and these four things circle around you and you're supposed to guess which one is behind you by the time they finish their song. But because they're all singing in unison and you can't see, you can only hear, it can get really confusing. And it doesn't help that the two guys and the two girls sound very similar. But the main character finds a trick around the game and ends up succeeding and getting the key in order to get out of the room, but not before meeting his second love interest in the movie, a character that used to be at his school but transferred to another one. But before she transferred, he actually like saved her from committing suicide by helping her get out all her anger and aggression and anxiety by like smashing plates. Which was a really touching scene, and to be totally honest, 
honest, I was actually rooting for her and him more than I was the main love interest in him. She was just this sweet little girl, and oh my god, like, what happens to her is so fucked up. Anyway, they get the keys, and they meet up with, like, four or five other students, and they move on to the next trial, with, of course, one of those other students being his rival. And the next trial is this giant snowboarding polar bear who essentially asks them all a question, and if everyone involved tells the truth, then they get to move on and live. But if one of them does not tell the truth, if one of them lies, then they must suss out who the liar is and sacrifice him to the polar bear. But it turns out there's an extra twist to this game because the polar bear reveals, after they lose a couple people, that there's actually a spy among them. One of their demons is hiding in a human suit and isn't really a student. So they gotta figure out who the traitor is before they all die. And I'm not gonna tell you who the traitor is because that actually is a really big twist that you'll find out for yourself when you watch the movie. But needless to say, they don't figure it out before that girl that they just introduced, the other love interest, totally dies and is sacrificed just for admitting that she loved the main character. But she did love the main character, it wasn't a lie. And when the main character breaks down when he finds out that, like holy shit, I, I started crying, like no joke. That shit was fucking raw, like it was melodramatic as fuck, but it really worked for me. And it's at this point in the movie that I'm gonna stop the spoilers, because from this point on, the movie goes in directions that, trust me, you are not expecting. It's super fucked up, it's super emotional, it's super intense. Though before we close this video out, I will say that that is the main plot of the movie. The main plot is these kids trapped in this giant god cube playing these trials. But there's a secondary plot, a subplot, of these characters outside of the cube who are trying to figure out what the cube is and why this is all happening and what's going on. And that plot ends with one of these characters discovering who God really is. And it ends on the reveal of that God, but it feels like a cliffhanger for like a sequel? In fact, there's one character who walks off saying he's gonna go save the world, but it ends before he does. So the subplot is very unsatisfactory for that reason. It doesn't end. And to be completely honest, knowing that this is an adaptation of the first arc of a manga, I'm kind of hoping they'll adapt the second arc and actually make a sequel movie. Because now I'm legitimately curious as to what's supposed to happen next, now that they've revealed who God is. Like I said, you're kind of on your own for finding a copy of this, and I wish you luck, but some of you might actually be in countries that already have it, and if you are, then rock on. Anyway, my fellow Gorehounds, as per usual, like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to ring that notification bell just in case that whole YouTube subscriber glitch thing is still happening. And as always, peace out, my fellow Gorehounds, and I'll catch y'all later.